So we are finally doing my question and answer. Get ready with me. I tried to do this in December during my 25 days of uploads, and yeah, I didn't get a single question, but a lot of you are saying that you never actually saw the post that I had put up in the community tab. I know sometimes those posts don't get to everybody. So I thought, you know what, let me go on ahead and try it again for the new year. So I made a post in my community tab. I made one on Facebook. I don't think I got any questions on Facebook. And I also made one on Instagram and between Instagram and my community tab, I have gotten a pretty decent amount of questions. So that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to kind of go through the list and answer those questions. Everything that I'm going to be using today will be from my recent Shop My Stash Everyday Makeup video. I'll have that linked in my description box below and I'll also put it down in a pinned comment. I always forget to say this, but I do have playlists. I have one for my Shop My Stash, you know, Everyday Makeup Rotation videos. I also have declutter playlists. I have playlists for pretty much everything. So I'll have some links down in my description box below. If there's anything that you guys are wanting to see more of, it's probably in a playlist. So I always forget to mention that said I wanted to go ahead and mention that at the beginning of this video. Before we jump in, I did get my box from the bomb. So this is supposed to contain the products that were missing when I did that mystery box unboxing. I've got the $75 box. There should have been five or eight products in there. Instead, they sent me the $49 box and I had five products. So I reached out to them and this is supposed to have the remaining products. So I thought we would just go on ahead and unbox it real quick before we start the Q and A. Ooh. Lots of brown packaging. It does feel like there might be a palette in here. If you guys are wanting to know what I got in the rest of the box, I'll have that video linked down below too, so you can check that out. Instead of just getting three items, it looks like they sent me five. So it looks like I got two extra items. Looks like we got the Bronzilla bronzer. This is something I've actually been wanting to try. I think that'll actually work pretty decently for me. It looks like it's a warmer toned bronzer, which is usually what I go for. They sent me the Antidotes Face Primer as green tea extract. They sent me another shade of the Meat Matte Hues Liquid Lipstick. This shade is in Sincere. I love this liquid matte formula. I got a Lid Quid Liquid Eyeshadow. The shade is in Rosé. That's what that is looking like. And then the last thing they sent me is a blush. It says, it's a date. Looks like it's a really pretty peachy coral. Nice. That's going to be gorgeous in the summertime. Well, I would say that they more than made up for sending me the wrong box. I am loving everything that they sent me. And I will definitely use some of these products in a future video. Now for the part you all have been waiting for, our big q and A. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of jump in. Like I said, we're going to go through the questions while I'm just throwing makeup on my face. Everything will be linked below should I forget to mention something because I probably will. And I'm not going to mention anybody's name just in case you don't want to be mentioned. Number one, do you film on a phone or camera and what editing software do you use? All right, let me throw on some primer while we get into that. This is just the Essence Fix and Last Jelly Primer. It's supposed to be kind of a dupe for that Milk Grip Primer. Um, just like that Power Grip Primer from e.l.f. I'm, I, I like it. Right now, I am currently filming on my phone. It is a Motorola stylus. It has a really, really good camera on it. The front-facing camera is better than the rear-facing camera. I have to use the rear-facing camera when I film because I don't have a monitor or anything like that. But it does the, tr the job. I would like to get a camera sometime this year. That is definitely on my list of things to do. The one that I am looking at is the Sony XV1. I think is what it's called. Um, I'm seeing it for about $600 on Amazon. So hopefully sometime this year, I'll be able to uh, move into a camera for now. We are still currently filming on my phone. As far as editing software, I'm currently using William Share for more, Filmora. 11. I really like it. It's pretty easy, straightforward. I think I spent like $70, $80 for it. And it's a lifetime license, which means that I don't have to like pay a renewal fee every year. Some of the other editors you have to renew yearly. I like this one because I can just, I paid the one fee and my license is lifetime. It's pretty basic. It has some really, really good features on there, but it's very easy, very straightforward to figure out. When I first started my channel and I was looking for editing software, everything that I was seeing was so complicated, but Filmora is just straightforward, very easy to use. If you're a beginner and you're like new to editing and you're not sure what you're doing, super beginner friendly. I really like it. What is your age? What is your ethnicity? And where do you live? I am 
46 years old. I will be 47 next month in March. I, I still cannot believe it when I, you know, when I think about it. But yeah, I am 47 years old. I am half black, half Korean. My mother is Korean. My father is black. He was um, in the military and stationed in South Korea. That's how he met my mother. And currently, I am living in Memphis, Tennessee. We moved here when I was like 14, so we've been here for about 30 years. So it's home now. I'm bronzing with that black up uh, contour stick. It's actually a pretty good shade for bronzing. I'm going to highlight with the other end and then conceal using something else. How long have you been doing makeup and where did you learn to apply eyeshadow? I have been wearing makeup my entire life, but I didn't start getting into makeup until about four years ago. It was like literally right before the pandemic. I've always been somebody that wore makeup when I needed to, but I really only cared about making myself look as flat matte as I possibly could. I didn't care about, you know, the type of products I was using, blush, highlight, none of that mattered. Like I just, I didn't really care anything about that. And then um, late 2019 it was. You're probably going to laugh when I tell you this, but when I really started getting into makeup, was during the whole James Charles Tati Westbrook drama. Before then, makeup was just not something that, you know, really interested me. But honestly, I kind of fell in love with Jeffree Star, and then that's what really got me into makeup. The way that I learned to apply eyeshadow, YouTube videos. Uh, anytime that there was something that I wanted to know, you know, like, you know, applying under eye concealer for somebody over the age of 40, you know, particular you know, eyeshadow look that I was going for, for, you know, an event or something like that, YouTube. That's, that's how I also practice. The more you practice, the more you get better at it. And I am still learning. I have a long way to go before I could ever, you know, call myself an expert. I'm not a makeup artist. This is just something I do for fun. Why did you start a YouTube channel? What it comes down to is I fell in love with makeup and I just wanted to share my love of makeup with others. I have never been someone that liked being on camera. I've never been someone that liked having my photo taken. You would have never before seen me on, on camera, film, and a picture ever without makeup on. That was a no-no. Doing YouTube just really helped to build my confidence. I feel like it helped me be, to have an outlet. It helped me to be more creative. And I just wanted to have a space where others could feel safe, you know, to be open and just to express themselves, you know, with makeup. Being over the age of 40, you know, I got started in this game kind of late. And some feel like that's holding me back where my channel is concerned. Like maybe my age, my ethnicity, maybe these things are the reasons why I'm not growing. But ultimately, the reason why I started my YouTube channel was that I fell in love with makeup and I just wanted to share the love of makeup with others. And to the person that did ask those last five questions, no, they were not too intrusive. I don't mind talking about those types of things at all. The next question asks, how do you pronounce your name? You guys, this is such a big one for me off and on YouTube. I have a title card at the very beginning of my videos that shows like what my name is, like how, to, uh, how it's spelled, but I don't ever say it at the very beginning of my videos, like how to pronounce it. Let me know down in the comments if you guys think I should start saying my name at the beginning of my video so people know how it's actually pronounced. But if you look at it, it is pronounced exactly the way it's spelled. ta nil yeah. Ooh, getting cover on my shirt. I think that people look at it and just think it's more complicated than it is. You guys, I have been called Tangelica, Tangenia. I've even just been called Tanya, as if the E-A-L is somehow silent in my name. But yeah, it's pronounced Tanelia. Do not ask me the origin of my name, though, because I literally have no clue my father named me. Maybe I should ask him where he came up with that name, because I've never actually asked him either, but that would probably be a good thing to know. I've heard it's old fashioned to exactly match your makeup to your clothes. Do you have any tips for how to pair colorful eye looks with outfits? I personally don't think it's old fashioned, you know, to match your clothes to your makeup. It might be a little bit much, you know, like if you're wearing a bright powder blue shirt to wear, you know, bright powder blue eyeshadow, like that may be a little bit too much. But as far as like pairing your 
clothing colors to match your eyeshadow, just pick like an accent shade. That's what I do. So like say I'm wearing, you know, purple and pink, right? And I have like little accents of like, you know, periwinkle blue or something like that. I might pull that accent of the periwinkle blue and make that the main focus of my shadow and then just add some other shades into it that might be complementary. That way you're like adding little accents in there but you're not just like straight having one super bright shadow that's the exact same color as you know your dress or your shirt or something. I'm not an expert. I'm not a makeup artist or anything but that's how I found it easier for me to you know kind of bring in the color of my clothing you know into my makeup. The brows are definitely cousins not twins but I, I think we got them looking decent enough. All right let's move on to the next question. What is your favorite makeup look that you have ever done? I don't know if I have like a favorite makeup look but I definitely have favorite makeup shades. Real quick, I'm gonna throw on this Juvia's Place blush. So pretty. This is one of their blushed duos. Isn't that pretty? I've been wanting to try these for the longest. Grab this on a sale. Back to the question, favorite makeup shades or favorite makeup look. Like I said, I don't really have a favorite makeup look, but I love specific shades, mainly green. Anytime I have ever done an eyeshadow look involving green, I love it. I love the way that green eyeshadow looks against my eyes. I have like hazily brown eyes. I just think it just really makes my eyes pop. And I think the uh, tones, especially if it's like a warmer tone green, just looks really, really good against my skin tone. So anytime I have the chance to use green shadow, that is what I will gravitate to. If I see... If I see a new eyeshadow palette coming out and it's greens, especially like more warm tones, oh my God, I just, I get so excited. This blush is so pretty. Do you see that? It's matte, but there's definitely a little bit of a luminescent glow. This shade is stunning. In the spring and summer, this is going to be gorgeous. How often do you switch up your skincare and do you have summer versus winter skincare? I don't really switch up my skincare much. I pretty much have a specific regimen that I do. Um, in the three skincare videos that I uploaded, I talked about my daytime, my evening, and my exfoliation routines. I'll link those down below too. I think I put those in a playlist. The only time that I switch up my routine is if I'm bringing in a new product. So if I finish something out, then I'll bring in something new. You don't want to switch up your routine too much. If you bring in too many different products at one time and then you have a reaction, you won't know which product is causing that reaction. So I only bring in one new product at a time and that's usually about every couple of months. And so that way, you know, should I have a reaction, I know it's the new product that I brought in. I also don't really have a winter versus, you know, summer skincare routine. The only thing that I may do a little bit differently is I may add a little bit more hydration like on the outsides of my face in the winter time. And then in the summertime, I use uh, products that are a little bit more mattifying. But other than that, it's pretty much the same all year round. Next question. What are some of the products that you always buy from Shop Misse? If you don't know, Shop Misse is an online retailer. They sell uh, Korean makeup. They sell skincare. They sell like home goods, um, decor, accessories, jewelry, things like that. And everything is like between a dollar, two dollars. Some things are around eight to ten. It just kind of depends on what you're buying. Real quick, we're going to be using the Sephora Pro Palette. This is the new nudes. This was one of the products that was in that huge box of makeup and skincare from Sephora that a friend of mine gave me um, on Facebook. This is so freaking gorgeous. You guys, this palette is like heavy. It's weighted too. So this is what we're going to be using to do our eye look. As far as products that I will always buy on Shop Miss A, the cleansing balm for sure. It's $8.88. You get 3.8 products. I have looked at cleansing balms you know, from other brands and they're always like, you know, $13, $14, $15, and you're getting less product. The one from Shop Masse works so good. It does such a great job of breaking down mascara, breaking down liner. It even gets rid of eyelash glue. That's something I will always purchase. The Artista liner, you guys have seen me use that so many times. The Artista felt tip pen liner, I like to use that for my wings. Beautiful liner, $1 gives such a precise line. Oh my God, I, I love 
using that one. The No Pore Primer, that's another one that I will always purchase. That primer is only $1.88 and it just fills in the pores really nicely and gives you such a smooth base. I love it. But yeah, those three products are products I will definitely always purchase from Shop Masse. Will you do any more cosplay looks? Now, if you are not new to my channel and you've been with me for a while, then you know that I am a costumer, cosplayer, on top of doing, you know, the, the beauty channel, or at least I was, I haven't done it in a long time. Basically my family and I, before the pandemic, we used to do it a lot, you know, go to conventions, comic book conventions, dressed up as superheroes, Disney characters. And I'm part of a group that does volunteer churches events and we dress up as superhero princesses, stuff like that. In the very beginnings of my channel, if you go back, you will see that there are some cosplay videos on there. There is one where I was Ping, you know, Mulan, when she's, uh, when she goes off to war to take her father's place and she goes by Ping, pretends to be a boy named Ping. I did that. I did one as like the Mulan in just her everyday dress. And I've also done one for Moana. Now, there are certain reasons why I don't do, or I haven't done any cosplay looks. For one, you know, when, when the pandemic hit, we weren't like doing a bunch of cons and stuff like that anymore. You know, we were on lockdown, we weren't really doing events. I did do one like kind of online event. That's the one that was for the Mulan. But yes, we just kind of weren't really doing them. And also those videos, whenever I would do those cosplay looks on my channel, they just were not getting many views. The one for Moana, you guys, that one took like three or four hours to film. I did the makeup, costume, everything, right? That video got like 20 views. It is frustrating enough, you know, trying to just do the regular makeup videos that I was doing and not getting many views to doing the more detailed videos and not getting any more views. It's just a lot of work. It was very, very discouraging. I'm basically in a place now where I just don't have the desire to put in a lot of time and energy into something that's just not getting views. Doing those cosplay looks, that's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time, you know, and to spend, you know, four or five hours working on just the filming part of the video, not editing. Four or five hours filming, not including editing, to only get 20 views. So yeah, I, it just, I found it very, very discouraging. And I, we haven't really, we've only been to one con in like the, nas the last year or so. It's not something that we've been doing a lot of either. My original intention for this channel when I first started it was to be a combination of regular makeup combined with cosplay makeup. But you know, like I said, because of the pandemic, the cosplay makeup just kind of faded. And those videos were not getting many views anyway, but who knows, as we go further into 2023, I might, you know, bring them back in. I might incorporate them. Let me know down in the comments if that's something that you guys would like me to bring back to the channel. You know, just sound off down in the comments. Let me know. Next question asks, I know you're half Korean. Have you been there? Do you speak Korean? What are your favorite foods? Hmm. I have never been there. I was born there. Uh, my father moved my mother and I to the U.S. when I was a year old. So, you know, of course, I don't remember being there. My mother has been back a few times. I have not my word. That shimmer, you guys, it's so smooth and buttery. Ooh. As you know, a trip like that, it's not cheap. It's pretty expensive. I would like to one day be able to just, you know, take my whole family and like go see, you know, that side of, you know, my culture and that, you know, that half of who I am. But unfortunately, it's not something that I have been able to do as of yet. As far as speaking the language, there are a few things that I can say. I'm not by any means fluent like at all. Um, I can say hello, which is anyahaseyo. I can say thank you, kamsamida. I can say mother and father, ama, apa. Uh, onyi is big sister, saringhamida, I love you. Ipayo, I think is you're pretty. Egi means baby. That's about it. <laughs> That's about all I can really say. My mother only ever really spoke to us like in her broken English. She never really spoke to us in Korean except for a few words. I tried to get her to teach my kids, but according to her, it's hard to try to, to, learn, to learn English and Korean at the same time. So she just never 
tried. I do wish that my mother did speak to us more in Korean because I would love to be able to speak to her in her own language more. Sometimes trying to speak to my mother, you know, in, you know, in English, there's a little, little English, you know, language barrier that can be a little difficult and it does get a little frustrating, you know, and it's something that I do wish I learned more of. If there was a regret in my life, that would be one that I do wish, you know, that I knew how to speak the language more. Favorite foods, um, uh, kimchi, which is fermented cabbage, uh, kimchi and rice. I love galbi, bulgogi. Both of those are meat dishes. I will drop pictures of things that I'm talking about so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. Otherwise, you're probably not going to have any idea what I'm talking about. But yeah, those are like some of my favorites right there. I grew up on Korean food. There was always rice in the, the steamer. There was very rarely a day where there wasn't fresh rice in the pot, like on the daily. Can you show us your nail polish collection? Well, I don't really have a nail polish collection. Trying to get the all this excess glue off of my lashes here. I have like some Sally Hansen nail polishes, some LA Color nail polishes, a few that I got from the Dollar Tree. But for the most part, I really only ever wear black nail polish, which is what you guys see in pretty much all of my videos. So yeah, nail polish is one of those things I don't really make a priority, so I don't have much of. I might change it up for, you know, a special occasion, you know, a season, something like that. But for the most part, black is where I live. While my lash glue is drying, I'm going to take this ColourPop liner in Absolute Zero, put it in my waterline. It's actually a lippy pencil, but I realize it's way too bright for me to use on my lips, so I just use it in my waterline. The very last question asks, how can you tell the difference between warm and cool toned, like eyeshadow shades, and honestly... I don't know the answer to that question. I, like I said, I'm not a makeup artist. I'm not an expert by any means. When I'm doing my shadow, I'm doing my own makeup, I can tell personally if a shadow is leaning more warm. I guess it's more like peachy, more golden, um, more bronzy, I guess. If it's more cool tone, it leads more taupey, kind of grayish. Like I said, I can personally tell when I'm doing my own makeup if I'm using something more warm or, or more cool or more neutral but it, but explaining it I'm not very good at that that's something that I would have to google I google a lot <laughs> I youtube a lot because there are a lot of things that I have no clue about I've only been doing this for a few years so yeah I am still a baby at this and there are a lot of things I do not know I still do not understand That were all the questions that you guys left for me. And I have to say, there were some pretty good ones in there. I really did enjoy doing this. Let me know, guys, if you enjoyed this as well, if this is something you would like to see more of in the future. I love interacting with you, getting to know you. I love for you guys to get to know me better. I think it helps with that, you know, building a community because the beauty YouTube community can be a tough one. It can be a lonely one. And we can, like, you know, build relationships. It just, it helps to make it a little bit easier. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up. It really does help with the channel. If you are new to the channel and you are not already subscribed, I would love it if you would consider joining my little family and hitting subscribe and make sure you tap that bell so you don't miss a thing. You can also follow me on my other socials. I am on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Be safe, take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next one.